My name's Guy Kesteven. I've been a professional bike and kit tester for nearly 25 years and today's video is brought to you with support from Giro Cycling and Merida Cycling UK because the bike I'm talking about tonight is the Merida 96 RC 9000 which I've had for a few months now. Super rapid bike, uh, done hundreds of K on it, racking up test mileage and just for fun as well. So it's going home, it's going in a box back to Merida. So I just wanted to kind of go through the tech details up close that you uh, might not have seen in the live ride review. So 96 means it's the shortest travel bike in the Merida range and it's their dedicated cross country race bike. And the RC9000 means it's their flagship race bike. So obviously cross country race bike, short travel, uh, 100 mil on this bike front and rear. There is an RC8000 which gets 120 mil four cup front, but the frame and the molds are the same across all bikes. The RC9000 here does get the CF5 uh, carbon fiber layup, which means Claimed frame weight for a medium is 1695 grams, which is 150 grams lighter than the 1845 grams claimed for the CF4 frames, which is what the other 96 bikes are made out of. And that brings complete bike weight in at 10.8 kilos for this full flagship spec, which, you know, so I'm not sure exactly what they're including in that frame uh, weight quote, because there are bikes which claim a heavier frame, which aren't far off in terms of weight with heavier componentry on. So, you know, but, you know, it's sub 11 kilos. This is a damn light bike. But that doesn't mean it's not a practical bike either. I mean, Merida have a massive history in sort of marathon racing, long distance racing. So that's really informed some of the features on this bike as well. You've got a bottle cage mount in the mainframe. You've also got a secondary one. It needs an adapter uh, to uh, fit the bottle cage onto it, but that means even on every bike, apart from the small, you can fit two large bottles into the mainframe. The small, you can only put a small bottle in there. You've got an accessory mount under there for tools or CO2 cartridges. And down here, you've got a threaded bottom bracket for longevity and because it's designed as a race bike and races are often quite finicky about how far apart the, what they call the Q factor is, the width between their pedals, it's got a deliberately designed with a very narrow Q factor. Uh, and that also means by keeping this bike back end tight and tucked in, get a 38 tooth ring on there if you want. Actually comes with a 34 tooth on this race face next SL crank, so super light crank with a good sized 34 tooth chain ring, powering this XTR setup at the back, you know, and it also gets XTR brakes, with a roadie style flat mount on the rear, but a conventional mount on the front. It's a 180 mil front rotor and it's a 160 mil rear rotor. Going back to the frame, you've got these big chunky chain stays, which include hidden cable routing. That actually runs in a tunnel underneath and it's the same with the brakes on the other side. And you've got what Merida called the P-Flex. I mean, obviously loads of different uh, manufacturers kind of do away with the rear flex, with the rear pivot and just use flex in this tube. Uh, as a way of allowing the suspension to move, but on the Merida they call it P-Flex. One ramification of cutting down that Q factor across there is that there's only room for a 2.35 tyre. You can see there's plenty of room with these 2.25s, and even on the RC8000, they still run a Maxxis DHR 2.35. So you can, you can squeeze a pretty chunky tyre in there, but you've just got really light fixtures throughout. You've got nice carbon rocker there, all moulded in one piece. And then you've got Fox Factory Shock on the rear and a Fox Factory SC32 fork on the front. So that's the lightest fork Fox do with the cutaway on the inside there to uh, save the weight. And also it brings the crown in narrower. So again, uh, tyre clearance is pretty limited on the front. But, you know, I say that only a few races are using 2.4 inch tyres. Uh, most people are still perfectly happy with a 2.25 recon races that this RC9000 has on. And the other piece of Fox equipment on here is this Fox transfer dropper post. It's listed as 150 mil, but the actual post in here is 170 mil. So I'm right down on the collar on this 477 mil seat tube. But, you know, that's a hell of a drop for a cross country bike. And certainly, you know, more than enough to uh, get yourself low and agile get yourself low, get dynamic for the more technical sections. Uh, up front, you've got a 740 mil Merida bar. It's a flat bar. It only weighs 140 grams, so that's super light. And then you've got 
this Merida stem on there again proper racer style you know it's a negative degree rise stem and that's a 70 mil stem on the large and extra large and a 60 mil stem on the uh, small and medium uh, you can see here you've got these little cable entry ports uh, made, fitted into this slightly inset top cap so that's quite a nice idea and actually I got some comments from people going, ah, doesn't it rattle internally? But I didn't have a problem with that at all. Uh, what I did have a problem is, uh, what I did have a slight problem with is the uh, lockout. Uh, it's a dual combination lockout on the uh, fork and the rear shock. And it's operated by, even though the Fox gear, it's operated by this RockShox twist grip there. And basically it's got a real hair trigger. You can set it up so it locks, but it's really easy to dislodge it, whether your hand strays onto the twist grip or it just sometimes unlocks over impact. Uh, so, and I've kind of done a bit of research on it and it seems like that's kind of a known issue uh, when you're matching the RockShox remote with Fox suspension. Because the main problem is, is that whereas RockShox suspension, if that uh, slips, it opened, it leaves the shocks open on the Fox, if it slips, it closes them. So you've got a fully locked out ride, which isn't what you want halfway down a descent. I mean, I guess it's what you want in a finishing sprint, but uh, it depends where your priorities lie. Uh, you've got a neat Shimano lever there for the dropper post, and that's the uh, release button for the uh, remote lockout if it hasn't already done it. But like I say, it is fixable, but it was definitely a niggle during my testing experience. Other things I'm not mad keen on, uh, metal bar end plugs on a bar is just yeah that just hurts the outside of your hands doesn't it and again you know save a few grams on there get some uh, get some just single grips or maybe even foam grips if you're a proper racer i was massively impressed with this pro logo saddle though i mean it looks very bizarre kind of tron like geometry but this uh, padding on there and the flex in the hull even though it's got deep old carbon rails on there very very comfy i mean it had a 96k first ride on this bike uh in snow over the dales not an issue whatsoever uh backing up the xtr and the next sl kit you've got dt swiss xrc 1501 again super well proven very light uh carbon fiber race wheel set it's not the lightest one that dt swiss do there's an xrc 1200 so again, you know, they could have gone a little bit lighter, but the price of this bike, 7,300 for top flight carbon fiber frame, plus an absolutely outstanding spec in terms of premium kit. I mean, again, you know, could have had a gold seat post, could have had a slightly lighter wheel, but you know, those are niggles. Overall, this is a very, very lightweight flagship kit out for 7,300 quid in the UK which, you know, you start comparing that to Specialized S-Works, things like that, you know, you're going to be paying a lot more cash. And actually, it's pretty competitive, even with people like Canyon on their uh, Lux bikes. And obviously, this is a brand new bike, whereas the Lux has been out for a while. And again, you know, although, I mean, in terms of geometry, it's definitely a lot more trail-friendly than the previous 96. So it's not a 70-degree head angle. It's a 70 point. It's a 68.5. You've got a 76.5 seat angle on the smaller medium and a 76 degree on the uh, large and extra large. This is a large I tested here. Uh, the big change for the positive is that rather than a 449 mil reach on the old large, you've now got a 473 mil reach. So a decent stretch on there. Again, you're going to struggle to go up a frame size with that seat post slammed in there, but you could go for a shorter post. And to be honest, I don't think many people are going to really want, certainly not the people this bike is aimed at, are going to want more than a 473mm a reach. That was plenty enough for me, you know, even on long hauling days out. But, you know, for those kind of treatment, you might want a stem that flips the other way up because, I mean, that will, but it'll look really weird because it is a dedicated negative rise stem. But apart from that, it is a really, really capable bike. I mean, obviously, watch the live ride review. I spent, you know, like I say, I spent a lot of time on this bike, uh, really getting to know it and really getting, really enjoying it. Ended up riding red runs, black runs, like I say, smashing out proper marathons in the Dales on it. And the suspension is really, really impressive. They changed the kinematic slightly. So although it's the same travel as the previous bike, uh, it measures about 95, it's claimed 100 mil. 
but that's probably you know, that's the case with most bikes. What they've done is they've essentially steepened the progression curve on it. So it actually starts with a higher leverage, so it's more sensitive off the start and then it's more progressive in the later stroke. And yeah, it's great. Really, really smooth over the small bump, power bumps, nice uh, the way the uh, pedaling is set up. It's a nice kinematic on there. So, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't need a lockout on it. It's certainly not for technical terrain. Uh, you know, you've got a little chain guide on there again to keep everything in place. And yeah, big old broad pivot there. And the bike feels impressively stiff, you know, certainly stiff enough to make full use of that fork and uh, those tyres. I mean, you know, they're not going to put a massive load through it, but you can get properly get some lean on without stressing the frame at all. And, uh, you know, certainly it's not the frame holding the bike back. It is things like the 740mm bar and the skinny fork that is where you'll find the limits of the bike. But, like I say, watch the live ride review. I think you'll be very surprised, like I was, where the limits of this bike are. And I'm certainly going to miss having it hanging on the wall, uh, ready to put other people in the pain cave. Because I've had some proper rapid rides on this. I really have. And I'm really, really keen to get another bike of this kind of category in to replace that. Because I'd forgotten how much fun a proper lightweight XC race bike actually is. So that's the quick tech talk round. Make sure you watch the live ride review. I had an absolute blast making it. And it will really bring home how this bike rides on all sorts of different terrain and in all sorts of weather. We had a proper adventure, us two together. But yeah, it's going back in the box to Merida now. So thank you very much to those guys for letting me have it on test for such a long time. Uh, like I say, thanks to Giro for supporting the channel at the moment. Thanks to my Patreon supporters who pledge a small monthly amount to invest in the channel, help me spend time making these videos. And they get extended behind the scenes and early edits as a thank you for that. So if you like what I'm doing on the channel, please consider subscribing on Patreon and joining those guys and yeah, contribute into the future. Make sure you subscribe, make sure you click for notifications, give the video a thumbs up if you've liked it because that means YouTube will share it wider and yeah, keep watching for more lightweight bikes on the channel because this has given me a real taste for proper cross country speed, especially as it does it in such a capable and enjoyable way. But for now, I've been Guy Kesteven on Guy Kes TV talking about the Merida 96 RC9000. Top value, top spec, ultra high velocity cross country weapon.